Yeah, this is Dr. Louis Falcon and Larry's sidekick and co-host. Some of you may know me from wherever. And uh, Larry's not here. He's in Australia. He's still looking for his wallet. So I'm kind of alone here. I'm not good at this sort of thing, but I don't know. Let, let's take a look behind the scenes of the Larry Wargo Show tonight. Or whatever it is they call it. And he's riding, he's riding. Okay, you're flying. Uh, Larry, let's go. Larry, get up, get up, get up. Okay, Larry, you just crashed through the floor. Okay, sit down. Okay, brush yourself off a little bit. Okay, puppets, get up. Start yelling at them. Start yelling at them, puppets. Hop, puppets higher. Puppets higher. Larry, okay, pull yourself up. You just crashed. Oh, you're sore. You're tired. Okay, okay, brush your... Just, puppets up. Pup, no, the puppets... Ready? Okay, Larry, get up, Larry. Okay, you just crashed through the floor. J pull yourself up. Puppets, puppets up. Puppets up. Higher, higher, higher. Puppets higher. Wispy, higher, higher, higher. Get down, get down, puppets, get down. Puppets up, puppets up. Start yelling. Immediately start yelling. Puppets back down. Basically, I got interest in animation because I was bored by the idea of still artwork. I thought it seemed to be passe. So I began developing some, or taking some line characters that already existed and make, blowing them up big and then cutting them out and articulating the mouths and eyes and maybe having them have arms and stuff. So I started doing that. Then I built this seven foot high plywood television set in which I was going to have all these cut out characters run with voice tubes to my mouth and sticks and rods to make those two or three characters all interact. Kind of Wizard of Oz guy in the background creating a almost medieval technology TV show. And it got kind of complicated and things started binding and ripping and uh, I began to think I was maybe I was crazy. It's almost like God called down and asked me to build an ark but didn't tell me there was a flood. Most of them were kind of flat but a few of them were flat with 3D projections. Uh, and the most complex one was Captain Alan Behanus back there who uh, actually you get inside of and the jaw moves the jaw and the tie pin moves the eyes and it's a very he heavy and awkward but really funny and strange. It's a kind of half reptile, half human, black and white thing. So the intro is going to start with Old Blind Jack. <laughs> 
He's gonna be in his house watching Larry Wargo on TV. What do you guys think his house should be like? Where do you think he should be living? If he is this obsessed over getting this band spot, I feel his house should be in partial disarray. But certain specific things should be immaculate. Yeah, it's weird family photos. Run down TV with a rabbit ears on it. I see doll furniture maybe making a little dingy room. Yeah, we'd have to make a little room. Unless you want to blue screen it. Screen. I think yeah, I think we're gonna have Dennis paint parts of it probably. I think I that would be make cool. It. Make a little wooden set or something. If you're gonna go with a dollhouse, you could have him be inside like a cardboard box. That'd be nice. Yeah. Like that. yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. I began to get help from other people, and one of these was a Ryan Decatur, who was a very Nordic fellow. Uh, <clears throat> Probably could have been with a Hitler Youth Group. Very tall, uh, very funny. One of my former illustration students, and he uh, he developed a character called Larry Wargo out of one of my drawings. So I started the foundation of that, and he did a little planning, and then I finished the sculpture and painted it, slid it over his head, and he became this uh, wannabe TV talk show host guy. <laughs> You know, I did this half puppet, half human thing that was good at interviewing uh, creative people, artists, uh, puppet makers, writers, whatever, creative people in northeastern Pennsylvania. Weird tensions between the guests and this puppet thing, and the head looks like Rodney Dangerfield and Stalin combined, and he towers over seven feet while wearing the thing, which is nice. Many of the puppets are tiny, which is an interesting contrast. And uh, just did it beautifully. He kind of adopted the Robin Leach voice from the TV show uh, La La. What was that called? Something Rich and Famous. Lives of the Rich and Famous. Hello, and welcome to Let's Get Cozy with Larry Wago. I am your host, Larry Wago. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. We have a wonderful. Hopefully, this is going to be the start of a wonderful series of shows called Larry Wago's Showcase of the Arts. We have three marvelous guests today, all distinguished artists themselves. We have Mark Hutsky, Mark Schultz, and Rob Lettieri. That's Thank God it's not three Marks. Anyway, our first guest today is Rob Lettieri. Rob, I'd like to thank you very much for showing up today. Okay, this is the original Larry Wargo head, which was built actually 15 years ago in, in a chicken coop in northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, inspired by a line drawing I had done of a guy eating a plate of mashed potatoes. It feels like it's filled with plutonium, and poor Ryan Decatur had to wear this thing on his head. Uh, this is made of plaster, wood, and iron, and it weighs about 30 pounds. And, and Ryan, when he first did his part, had to be screwed into it. It was really claustrophobic. So he'd put this on, then we'd take this back piece and screw it on to the back of his head. So he's pretty much trapped in there. It probably lost 10 pounds off the weight of his head itself. Once it's on Orion's head or any actor's head, the jaw moves the lips down here, and weirdly enough, it seems to work. The eyes have no pupils, but they read as shaded uh, openings. So that's the big plaster heavy head that we did the first maybe 10 episodes of uh, Let's Get Cozy with Barry Wargo. This is uh, the new head made of styrofoam plastic, which is a lot lighter. And also, um, it's you, the, the actor can see better. There's holes drilled in here, there's gigantic nostrils and some slits in the mouth area here. The way the actor gets into this one is there's little posts back here. Slide into the skull, if you will. It's there, and then this fits on two pegs. They're hard to see, but there's two dowels coming out here. Looks like the Iron Maiden. The actor will slide into here. Someone helps them get the back on, and then the mouth will move the jaw like that. Now, this is not adjusted for me. I think we have evolved. Now, there's a mold for the new head, so we can make many Larrys if he wanted to have, like, uh, an army of Larry Wargos, or uh, I don't know, if one of them got destroyed or attacked by a bystander. We're ready with a new head from the new mold. <laughs> After we see that, he's actually going to go on the show, and he envisions himself, because he's in love with Larry, knocking Snake out and taking his place as the band leader. I don't see any kittens in that terrible man tree. I like corn and I like tangerines, and I also like orange juice poured over all of it. I mean, that sounds really disgusting, but it's in a bowl. So what 
activities you think he and Larry could be doing? Going to an adult bookstore together. Artsy coffee shop. And chocolates. If you've ever done it when you're a kid, you hold hands and then you swing around in a circle. Only with a pedophile. Yes. I figure yes. maybe we could have Larry and him because it's just so absurd. You have this huge puppet Larry head and then you have this little guy. Button. I'm thinking it would be old Blind Jack's perspective, so we should be looking up. Okay. How do you guys feel about that? That would make sense. And then his we can look down a little bit. This way. Can you imagine people looking out their windows right now? It's like an alien landed. <laughs> What's that? You're going to be ready for the old age home. I don't want to go. <laughs> we'll we just drop him off like this. Bath area. Okay, stand here. All right. Okay, look at me. Uh, down towards where the camera is. The camera's gonna be all blank. Deck. Keep, to do about send them it. all the way under the camera. Okay, now so let's try spinning. Nice and smooth. He's ahead of me. Well, there's gonna be snow, but I guess that's all right. And you'll be seeing my. It'll be like this. You'll be seeing me holding yes. him. So I'd have to be like this. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> Here's me as a piece of bread. Hi. Hey, I've been loafing all day. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Lois Falcon speaking. <laughs> my real voice. Anyway, this is my most complex puppet. His purpose is to be an annoying co-host that constantly screws up the show and, and Larry Warburg has to get him back on board. Uh, Al, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I'm very familiar with Flesh Gordon. It was a movie and I wonder if you had anything to do with that. Did I ask about paper cuts? Is there any connection between uh, the binding of books and the tying up of people for fetishistic reasons? You want to go out in the woods and mail bond with me? How about uh, cardboard cuts? You ever, you ever have them? I need some help here, man. Boy, Let's... you need help. <laughs> How about no question some... about that. Despite my low brow and uh, origins uh, with organized crime, I do not like pornography much. A little dramatic tension there. This is the back side, so to speak, uh, the business end, business side of uh, uh, Lou Falcon. The back itself shows uh, the spring which holds the mouth up, which is run by a little lever back down here, which also moves the eyes a little bit at the same time. And the eyes can be moved separately by this device down here. This is a smoking tube. I get a partner working with me to both smoke out of there, which comes out of his parted lips. Also, there is a wire down here which attaches to the cigarette, which will allow the cigarette to glow when that's pushed. So the illusion, I don't have it set up right now, is a glowing cigarette and smoke coming out of his mouth. You ready? Okay, yes, let's go. Oh, hang on. I, I'm seeing your hand, Dennis. Let's take a look at this setup. Dennis, under chair. Do I look as cute as an older man could look? We have the script here. Oh, yeah. This is crazy. Right by Dennis. What do we do to amuse the audience? Yeah. Lou on top. <laughs> Music stand. On pillow. On table. Lights in my eyes. On chair. Cameras up. Sound speed. Oh! Ow! Oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. That's hard being under a chair, like making a puppet sound real. <laughs> uh, but I'm up to the task. I gotta check my cell phone to see if my mistresses have called in. Oh, Luann, yes. It was really pulling together very well in the Marywood TV studios. We had a producer <clears throat> and lots of help. It was even going out on Adelphi Cable. I think we had five episodes out there. and started to get some response, and the guy producing it decided that he needed to put some bread on the table, in his words, and uh, just kind of dropped the whole thing. Yeah, it was quite painful. This is 15 years ago. This, this would be, this is right in the spirit of the way things are going today. It was dropped down a very deep toilet and uh, we tried to struggle to recover. So I kept building more puppets, God knows why. Uh, I had to stop me before I build another puppet again. And now uh, what this has morphed into uh, some new folks that are really interested in doing this, and among them is Kevin Bogram who refuses to give up, and uh, we're rebuilding the show.
My name is Brian Lennon, and I live in Dixon City, Pennsylvania. Uh, as far as my mutant powers, I am able to tell a... You know what, it's probably better if I don't get into the details of that right now. Teach uh, disadvantaged youths that, youths that get kicked out of four different school districts. I'm an assistant store manager at Pearl Vision. You know, I'm very excited about the idea of this project, the Larry Wargo show. It seems really, really funny. I like that British style of humor. I saw the advertisement for the Larry, the Larry Wargo show on Craigslist. Good Lord, welcome back. My name is Larry Wargo, and let's get cozy with me. Hello, and welcome back to the Larry Wargo show. I am your host, Larry Wargo. And welcome I'm... back, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, your host, Larry Wargo. From West Scranton, Pennsylvania, put your hands together for Ted Miklowski. Did I pronounce that right, Teddy boy? Yes. And I'm joined here tonight by the famous illustrator, Ted. Help me with your last name, Ted. Mikolowski. Mikolowski. With me tonight is artist extraordinaire, Ted Mikolowski. Ted, glad to have you tonight. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, what the biggest high-profile case you have ever had? Tell us about some of the famous trials you've you've drawn for. Do you ever find that the people that you sketch in the courtroom are uncomfortable with such things? Larry Wargo! I forgot my name, Ted! <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, it's going to be the, the Jerry Cops Springer you. show <laughs> pretty soon. Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> Come to the Vintage Theater! Tonight we're here at the Vintage Theater in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where the Independent Artist Collective is having a show. Tonight, artists will be featured in the process of creating their art. If you'd like, let's head inside. I'm Larry Wago. And I'm Larry Wago. Hi, Larry Wago. Tell me a little bit about what you're drawing here tonight. Very interesting drawing you have here. Hello, how you doing, sir? Are you a broken-hearted man? Yes, I am. Does red, the color red, make you angry? Where did you get this scarf? Single ladies over here. This is a waiting room. Is this a joyous waiting room or a sad waiting room? Tell me a little bit about this sculpture here. Is this a cup holder? I love your hat. Can I put my arm around, Jim? Would you perform a scene from Titanic right now? Oh, you're the mayor of Scranton, yeah? No, my name is Larry Wago. I'm winning political office I'm not even running for. Spread your arms out and go, I'm king of the world. Larry and Jim. I'm king of the world! That was beautiful. Larry. Larry. That's kind of like Larry. I'm talking to my cousin Allie. Hi, cousin Allie. Smells good. I'm Larry Wago. Don't squeeze Ooh. too tight. Oh, yes. That's all for the Vintage Theater tonight. Big thank you to the Independent Artists Collective. Toodaloo. From West Scranton, Pennsylvania, put your hands together for Ted McLaughlin. Can I pronounce that right, Teddy? Oh, yes. Uh, illustrator, Ted. Help me with your last name, Ted. Nikolowski. Nikolowski. I think you did an amazing job, I'd first say of all. I probably about 100 people. 100 people applauding loudly. I was the last one to clap. I tried to pull the clapping along to honor myself and my buddies. Uh, yeah, I feel neat. This is, I have a feeling this is going to work. Well, that's about all we got to show you tonight. Still no sign of Larry. I guess he took off, left me here. Now it's all up to me. me. <coughs> I figure he's probably messing up some toilet somewhere in a fancy hotel. Hmm, matter of fact, I feel kind of gassy myself. Maybe I'll take care of business out by the bus stop when nobody's looking. Then I'll go downtown and show a hooker a good time. Okay, everybody, that's about it. I gotta get out of here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of this experience. And uh, we love you all, but Larry and I, we love you. And I gotta go out to the bus stop, take care of business, and then go downtown and see some people. So thank you, and God love everybody.